The NFL Draft is just six days away, really seven for Denver, but make sure you are subscribed before the draft gets underway because we'll have a video on every single pick that Denver makes, and you won't want to miss getting to know future Broncos players, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already. What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome into the show. Happy Friday to everyone watching. Coming up on today's show, we're going to jump into the latest draft rumors after George and Sean Payton spoke to the media this week. They gave us some insight on their strategy for this upcoming draft. Plus, we're going to talk about trading up or down. Now, Sean Payton had a very interesting quote that I think everyone should see. Here's what he said on the Broncos draft plan coming up. We're going to grade these guys and make sure that we're getting the best available player. If the best player on the board is a defensive end or offensive guard and we have a clear vision, that'll happen. If the draft ends and we've got a receiver, a tight end, in other words, some of that is subjective to how this thing unfolds. Amen, Peyton. Thank you. Go best player available. That is going to be on my tombstone. That and take the points in the first half. Because Denver is not one guy away from going on to win multiple postseason games, right? They don't have a complete roster outside of one spot like a lot of other AFC teams do. So get the best player. Even if they don't have a big role for them in 2023, you'll be happy that you've got great talent for the future. Now, I'm sure we have all memorized Denver's five precious draft picks for the 2023 NFL Draft, pick 67 and 68, which I think there's a very good chance that one of those two picks gets traded, and plus some later day three picks. Now, here are the Broncos' team needs, in my opinion, going into the NFL Draft. I've got edge rusher as number one, but you really can make an argument and persuade me to swap that with corner. Number three, I'll go with center because, let's be honest, unfortunately, Lloyd Cushenberry is probably not the guy. Running back, I have at number four. You could also put that up to number three if you'd like. And then number five, I think the Broncos are looking for a new swing tackle. So I'll put offensive tackle there. So if we take Sean Payton's word of they want to go best player available, okay? Well, with that, we actually can narrow down who the crop is based on some other big boards out there. Now, Denver's big board might be dramatically different. But I've got three different big boards from some big J's out there in the NFL draft world. Here is Dane Brugler's from The Athletic. I think Dane is one of, if not the best draft gurus out there. So if they want to go best player available and they really don't care about the position all that much, don't be shocked at pick 67 if someone from 60 to 64 they are still available. They go Darius Rush or Isaiah Foskey. Heck, even Zach Charbonnet, a running back, okay? Sam Laporta from a I, Iowa tight end. That would surprise me with the way Dulcich played last season. But it just goes to show if it's truly best player available, we can somewhat zero in on who to keep an eye on. ESPN's big board, in case you're wondering, looks like this. I mean, you've got some familiar names or some similar names across the board. And then you've got some very different names, right? You've got Michael Wilson, a wide receiver. Um, Sidney Brown, a corner from Illinois. Derek Hall out of Auburn. He is an intriguing name to keep an eye on. Pro Football Focus, here is their big board. Just to show you some more names to somewhat familiarize yourself with, right? Charbonnet, Foskey, we've seen them twice now on these big, big boards. Michael Wilson as well. So these are some very viable draft targets that if Denver is looking to just take the number one player on their board, regardless of the position at 67, these are some very viable draft candidates. Now, today's Broncos breakdown is sponsored by Zbiotics. Let's face it, after you guys hit me with a bunch of super chats during our watch parties, I do not always bounce back well the next day. Now, that is until I found Zbiotics. Zbiotics pre alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. 
Drink Z-Biotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Give Z-Biotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash chatsports to get 15% off your first order when you use code chatsports at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're ever unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash chatsports and use the code chatsports at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring today's video. Now, if I had to somewhat round up those three big boards, and there's plenty others out there, and look for some familiar names that also fit positions of need, John Michael Schmitz, a center out of Minnesota, he definitely feels like Denver could be looking into. Derek Hall and Isaiah Foskey, two edge rushers that are right there on the end of round two, early round three line. Cam Smith from South Carolina, a super lengthy corner. They want to give Pat Sertan someone to work with. Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami, a very physical corner that maybe you could bump to the nickel after K1 Williams leaves probably after next season. So now let's run through some stats on those five guys. John Michael Schmitz, a longtime center for Minnesota. I mean, I just feel like wherever he goes, he's going to step in and he's going to be a starting center for them for at least two contracts. I am that high on Schmitz. Um, As for the two edge rushers we looked at, Derek Hall and Isaiah Foskey, Derek Hall has not shown a ton of production, but all the physical tools you look for are there. As for Foskey, he might not have the greatest size or athleticism, but the production is very much there. I love the Notre Dame fighting Irish Foskey in this draft. As for the corners, Cam Smith and Tyreek Stevenson, they're not identical size guys. Cam Smith is a little bit bigger, but Tyreek Stevenson, he's a nasty mama jamba. He is just not someone you want to line up against. I like both of them. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go with Cam Smith, though, from South Carolina. So what say you? Who is your top draft target, right? Who is the guy? Keep it somewhat realistic for me here, though, that if that is the name read by the Broncos at pick 63, you will be doing somersaults for. Give me that name down in the comment section. For me, I love best player available, but I'm also going to just sprinkle in this right here. You do play Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert twice, and just those guys, right? There's a lot of other great quarterbacks in the NFL as well. But when you're guaranteed four games against two of the best five, seven quarterbacks, however you want to rank them in the NFL, you got to figure out a way to slow them down. And there's two good ways to do that. Either sack them with an edge rusher or make a no-fly zone with a good cornerback duo. Now, I don't have the answer for you on what's the best way to approach slowing down, slowing down Patrick Mahomes, right? Is it getting a great secondary so he can't pass against or they – great front four to bring him down. If I had the answer for that, I'd probably be a defensive coordinator in the AFC West right now. So with that being said, that's up to Sean Payton and George Payton to figure out. But I think edge and corner, if you can get a combination of best player available at one of those two spots, that's going to be great moving forward for the Broncos. Now let's talk about trades here on the show. So Sean Payton and George Payton both commented on the possibility of trading picks and how feasible is it and how it can get done. Now, Zach Stevens from DNVR tweeted this out with a Sean Payton quote saying, it's easy to obtain draft capital. Generally speaking, if you want to move back, you can or forward, you can. Moving in and around the draft is, I don't want to say easy, but it's very feasible. So we had that, and then this tweet from Mike Kliss, which I think offers some good context, saying, research shows Sean Payton likes to trade up to get a guy. George Payton moves. George Payton more likely moves back for more picks. Sean Payton, from a standpoint of us working it out, that'll be smooth and easy. This is my first time working with George, and it's been fantastic. So if you are wondering what it could look like to move up, right, towards the first overall pick in the draft, Here is a rough trade projection. Denver and Detroit make a deal where the Broncos go from pick 67 up to pick 55. So they jump into the second round of the draft, and they also pick up a future six-round pick. 
in exchange for their fourth round pick in this year's draft. So the Lions pick up a fourth rounder in this year's draft class for moving back 12 spots, essentially. And they also give up a future late day three pick, but GMs never really value that all that much. So if they do move up to the early sec or the late second round, one name to keep an eye on here is the edge rusher from USC, Tuli Tupiloto. I am a big fan of him. 13 and a half sacks. He doesn't have maybe the greatest athleticism in the world, but a multi-year starter for the Trojans. This would be a fun get for Denver. Don't know if he'd be an outside linebacker or a five technique defensive end and a three, four front. That's up to uh, Vance Joseph to figure out, but this could be a name to keep, uh, keep an eye on if Denver wants to move up. Now let's say they want to move back, right? George Payton goes, I've only got five picks in this draft. Can I get some more for 2023? Well, here's a trade back option. The Broncos and the Steelers make another trade. This time it is from 68 back to 80. Now in this trade, I've got Denver picking up, instead of a pick this year actually, a pick next year's draft, a third round pick in 2024. And the Pittsburgh Steelers pick up a fifth round pick to somewhat offset giving up a future third. So they want to move back in the draft, right? They want to get future draft picks. Maybe they're moving back and they're finding a guy like Garrett Williams from Syracuse. Now, he's not one of the bigger corners in this draft. He's definitely not on the small side. He's kind of right in the middle. 35 tackles, two interceptions, and three pass breakups for the Orange back in 2022. Now, the reason why I like this trade is because let me show you what Denver could work with in 2024 if they do move back and pick up a future third, like they did last year with the Colts, and now they've got two third-round picks this year. This is a potential 2024 draft arsenal. If they pick up a future third, a first, still no second, that belongs to New Orleans because of Sean Payton, but you did get the Saints' third-round pick. So if you've got a first, three-thirds, and two-fourths, I mean, that is five picks right there, early day two, or mid-day two, rather, and early day three, plus your first-round pick, where next year you might be sizing up to be a bit more aggressive if you have a better idea of whether or not Russell Wilson will be this team's quarterback moving forward. So let me know. Do you prefer trading up or trading down? Because there are good arguments for both sides. Like, I'd rather have six great picks versus ten good picks. I think getting all the picks in the world... Yeah, it sounds tempting, but I'd rather have quality over quantity at some times. But as for trading down, Denver, I don't think, is actually in a spot where they're going to be making a lot of postseason moves this year. So why not play for the future a little bit? Get a guy next year and have a rookie contract start four years from next year in 2024 when maybe you're a bit more competitive and things are lining up better for you. So with that being said, that is why I would rather prefer trading back and getting a day two pick in 2024. If I had to pick one of these two options, I just think the idea of getting three third round picks next year, plus you get your first round pick back finally, and two fourth round picks, we're talking six picks from rounds one through four. Those are the good rounds. Round five is a fringe round. Six and seven, light them on fire. Send them to the sun. They hardly amount to anything. I know you get a Danny Trevathan once in a while. I get that. But every Danny Trevathan, there's 10 other guys who don't even make it past the third year in the NFL. So I'd rather get some more picks for next season when I think the Broncos are going to be in a much better spot to be winning football games than they are this year. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with us on your Friday. We'll see everyone later with more Broncos news and rumors.